Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for intel, forecasts, and success strategies. Hi, I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for joining us. How are you joining us around the country? This segment is brought to you by Real Crowd. If you're in commercial brokerage, definitely check out realcrowd.com. You'll be glad you did. Well, today I want to talk about construction. I want to talk about labor. You know, there's been some big storms, floods. We're talking about is there a hit on GDP? Is there a hit on energy prices? Is there a hit? Is there going to be a hit on gas prices? We're already seeing that, obviously. What's that going to do to the economy? And when you think about construction costs, that really impacts all of us. If you're a business, you use space, or you're an investor, and you own real estate, you know. Uh, Construction costs are key when we're building out uh, spaces, when we're building new spaces. Also, when you look at replacement costs and you're making investment decisions. Please welcome my first guest, Adam Kamins. He's senior economist with Moody's Analytics, and he's joining us on the phone. Adam, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Michael. Well, Adam, I think as you as you heard, I think a lot of our listeners and viewers are kind of concerned is, you know, what, what's going on in, in Houston and what's going on in the Keys and in Florida and, and in Puerto Rico. Uh, how is that going to impact uh, construction cost and, and labor things uh, moving forward in the near term and, and maybe long term? Sure. Both, all of the storms and the fact that we've had three major hurricanes now hit the, you know, some portion of the U.S. in the span of, of basically a month, it's going to have a significant impact on, on costs. Uh, building materials, we're already seeing a, a pretty significant rise in prices for materials like plywood, lumber, et cetera. Um, and you know, labor shortages as well are going to play a significant role. We've already seen actually you know, before these storms that it was getting harder and harder to find construction workers, which was pushing up you know, costs for, for workers, pushing up wages. And you know, with more and more demand now for rebuilding, that's going to have an even more significant effect along those lines. Yeah, I think if I'm labor for construction or I have a construction company, boy, I'm going to really concentrate on those areas. There's going to be a lot of work there for a long time, right? That's exactly right. And I think those are areas, you know, in particular, we think about Florida, we think about Southeast Texas and Houston in particular. These were areas that were growing very rapidly already. There was a lot of demand to begin with before these hurricanes hit. Now you kind of tack on a major rebuild that's going to need to take place, especially in Houston. Um, and demand is going to be, you know, kind of go through the roof in a lot of these places. And so that is going to put a lot more pressure on wages in that sense. And that's going to have a national impact because you're going to see more and more you know, demand kind of funneling to these areas that were hit by the hurricane. And that hits, you know, all real estate markets throughout the country. Right. And you mentioned Houston. And Houston is uh, kind of the capital of the U.S. Uh, gas market, right? Fuel. Uh, oil. That's right. So, you know, and we're seeing the prices uh, going up on gas. I filled up my uh, pickup truck this morning. Yeah, I'm from the South. Got a pickup truck. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, it, and it, it, again, it stopped at $100 and didn't fill it up. That hasn't happened to me in a while. And, of course, the gas prices impact prices and companies all over the U.S. What do you see there? Yeah, no, I think we're certainly seeing that effect. I think the, the major impact... Uh, comes, again, from Hurricane Harvey, from the impact in Houston, the fact that oil refineries were shut down for a while, that you know, there was a real shock to supply uh, certain shale formations in, the, in southeast Texas where oil is, is drilled, those were, those were compromised. And so we have seen gas prices rising throughout the country. And basically, you know, when gas prices rise, that means there's less disposable income in consumer pockets that... You know, as a result, what we what we get is less spending, less demand, and that has a broad impact on the overall economy. So, you know, we are seeing gas prices that are elevated. They're going to remain elevated, at least compared to where they were um, a month or two ago for the foreseeable future. And, you know, as a result, we, we would expect that, you know, the, the kind of, you know, this is going to have a little bit of effect of an effect on, on areas like retail and certainly on, on business costs, transportation costs, things along those lines. Yeah, I was uh, filling up my car. 
I have a car too. Look at that. And uh, <laughs> uh, and went into the the station, and the guy said, uh, "Aren't you going to buy anything in the store?" And I said, "No, I spent all my money at your gas pumps, <laughs> so I can't spend any money in the store. It's beyond my budget today." And uh, so, how long might these gas prices be impacted? Are they going to come back down, or or are the uh, oil companies going to say, "Yeah, this is where we should be." <laughs> They, they probably will make their way back down gradually. We are seeing more and more refineries begin to get back online. And actually, it's been a little bit of a, of a surprise that it, it's taken as long as it has. There actually was a little bit more damage to some of the oil refineries along the Gulf Coast than, uh, than it initially appeared. So it's taking a bit longer than expected to kind of get supply back up to where, to where it needs to be. Uh, but we will eventually see, you know, it, probably not this year, uh, mm-hmm. but, you know, as we get into next year, we will see gas prices kind of get back, you know, to where they've been and we'll get, you know, the, the dominating forces that, you know, typically take place with, you know, global supply, global demand, you know, sh- uh, shell drilling, things along those lines. Um, that will kind of move back to the fore in terms of what's setting oil prices. Yeah, we're talking with Adam Kamins with Senior Economist with Moody's about the construction costs and the storms and, and how that's impacting uh, the market and the economy and commercial real estate. So gas prices high, obviously a big impact on, on the economy. So you think it'll take that long? It might be, say, a year from now before these prices uh, drop significantly for gasoline? I think I think it'll probably be a little bit less than that. I think mm-hmm. maybe you know six or so months before prices are, are at least – pretty close to where they were before before these storms. Mm-hmm. You know, we may not get exactly to where we would have been absent these storms for a little bit longer than that, but I would say by the time we get to, you know, the winter, certainly by next spring, I don't think that, that you'll be seeing gas prices reflecting the impact of these storms anymore. Yeah. Well, I want the prices my old pappy told me about. 29 cents a gallon, he said. when he was. <laughs> I don't think we'll be getting back to that, unfortunately. Uh, come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. Come on. <laughs> um, well, what about uh, if you own real estate, you're, 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 you're leasing to businesses, you run a business, you know, and you're thinking about labor costs because you mentioned – that we already had a shortage of labor in the construction market. This certainly makes it worse. What do you expect for labor and construction prices uh, moving forward? Are we going to have just a surge in, in, in Texas and in Florida, or are these prices going to rise across the country, and how long might that last? Sure. I, I think we would expect, and again, this was even before these storms hit, we've been expecting to see a, a real – if not a surge, at least a, a significant pickup in construction wages across the country. Uh, now, the demand is going to be so pronounced in southeast Texas and Florida that I think it will, you'll see a little bit more of a surge in prices there. Uh, but I think you'll see it across the country. And because this is not just related to the hurricane, right? The hurricane is going to power kind of an additional surge, but uh, we're at a place right now where, you know, there's been a lot of demand coming from both the residential market and the commercial market and not enough construction workers. Um, on top of that, you have, you know, the impact of tighter immigration policy that may be kind of choking off some additional supply of construction workers. All of that basically means that you're going to get uh, probably sustained upward pressure on construction costs for for a while. Um, so I don't think you may get a little bit of a temporary spike coming out of the, the rebuilding from the, from the hurricane, but unlike gas prices, this is not the kind of thing where I think we'll be kind of back to normal or back to where we were, you know, six months ago, a year from now. Well, that's interesting because one of the, the impacts on commercial real estate is new supply, right? And I'm wondering if, if costs rise, if that's going to curtail some of this uh, new supply. Uh, although we don't think we've oversupplied in a lot of markets, but it's always a concern that we, we build too much, right? <laughs> well, Adam, what would you uh, say as a closing tip for commercial real estate people around the country related to construction costs and, and, and labor and gas prices moving forward? I would say that just it's worth keeping an eye, you know, in the next few months that there might be be some surges that take place, especially, you know, in, in terms of construction costs, materials costs, worker costs, but basically just to take the long view that, you know, th- we are going to see kind of an upward creeping of, of wages. I Like I said, I wouldn't expect that, you know, wage pressures and cost pressures are going to completely abate, 
Uh, but if things you know look extreme in the next month or two, don't overreact to that either. And that you know things will kind of get back into equilibrium in terms of how they're growing. Right. We can take it easy, take a big sigh, and relax, <laughs> and deep exactly. breath. Right. Well, Adam, thanks for joining us. Great information, sir. They're my pleasure, Michael. Thank you. All right, and stay with us. We'll have more on construction costs right after this. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. Thank you.